Hi, I'm Eric Farewell. And I'm Travis Burns. We run a paramotor school here in Central Florida and the Paradigm Aerobatic Team. And we love all things aviation. This is Aviator Show. Hey guys, what is going on? Eric Farewell from Aviator here. And today I wanted to make a video about the Power Float to be sure and how you can install it on your paramotor. There's been lots of requests for this lately and actually ironically enough, my motor is power floatless right now because we just finished the Owensboro Air Show where all the power floats got distributed because they were flying over the mighty Ohio River, which was running so fast with so much stuff in it, it was scary. And all the pilots were like, we want three power floats or four power floats. So we shared them out and it gives me an opportunity to put these back on for you. The power float is an incredible system that uses a automatic device that fires your flotation CO2 package anytime it touches water or becomes overly humid. So keep these inside, keep them air conditioned if you can. If you leave them in your garage, they may fire and it's about 30, 40 bucks per side to have it reinflated or a reinflation kit put back in it. Uh, that said, it's very easy to mount. I want to take you guys through that whole system right now. There's two simple options that most pilots use. You can choose whatever works best for you. My goal is always to make sure that if I do go in the water, because I love to water foot drag, uh, that it keeps me floating face up. I want to be able to catch my breath, get untangled from any lines that might be in the area, and then make my way to shore. So for me, I prefer mounting them on my chest, on those chest straps, the shoulder straps. Uh, a lot of pilots will mount them on the frame itself. I'll show you both systems and walk you through the important parts of this in just a moment. All right, to get started, you're gonna receive two of these units from us here at Aviator, and they're gonna to come to you as separate sides. It's very important that you install them on the proper side, otherwise that flotation item is going across your face or across your chest, or it could even run into the frame and not properly inflate. So as you'll notice, they have a package or a, a, a Velcro on one side or the other. This one has it for the left side where it allows that nice flotation device to pop out the side. Additionally, make sure that you follow the instructions inside the bag where it walks you through how to install your CO2, etc. If you're in a country that you're not able to receive a CO2 from us, all the information that you should need for how to buy that CO2 should be inside the package or listed on our website at aviatorppg.com. This one's for the left side. I'm gonna mount this one to the chest strap or the, uh, the shoulder strap first and foremost. This piece right here is your buckle. And what's very important about this is you wanna leave enough space so that you're not actually using this as a retention strap. You don't wanna be carrying the weight of the motor on your flotation. Even though if you do so, all that's going to happen is you're gonna end up with some fraying right here like so. When I first installed these, they were installed improperly. I had it a little too tight and ended up carrying the weight of the motor right there on that packaging. It doesn't affect at all the actual flotation device inside this sheath. As you'll notice, that's well below the area that got torn. So on this left one, we're gonna take this nice strap we have here first, and we're gonna slide this through the overarching bar, the top bar on your frame. Again, I'm gonna leave it some, with a little extra slack, making sure that I have plenty of room for this to move. It does not need to be super tight here because my goal is that when it's inflated, it's actually going to ride up and keep my head out of the water. Through the, across the bar, through here, back down, and then again, just to lock it in place to make sure that there's no movement. Quick little tie and in place. Next up, you'll notice all of these wonderful Velcros. These are just gonna go simply right around that shoulder strap. I don't notice any difference in comfort. It does kind of ride closer to your head if some people are really sensitive to that. But for me, I prefer the safety. I think the safety is worth the effort and worth the discomfort. So these go each one around. Again, the goal being to keep this close to my body. Once I get here, you'll notice I have one more of these long carry straps. This is where it actually carries the weight of you attached to the, uh, the flotation. The Velcros will work as well, but I wanna make sure that I always have these in a position where it's going to keep it fastened close to me. So for me, on this unit in particular, I'm gonna wrap it around this uh, mid strap, the belly strap or chest strap, whatever you wanna call it, and just do the same thing I did on the top strap through itself and then tie it off so that I don't have excess slack. Finally, you'll notice something that's dangling by my right hand. That's the red manual inflation device. That one I'm gonna tuck inside because unless I know, like I'm going on a flight that's very dangerous, it's gonna be over water for an extended period of time, we're for filming over the Everglades or whatever else, then I'll pull those out, but I'll also make a decision to fly with less straps. I'll usually end up removing all my straps except for one leg strap, unless I'm doing aerobatics or the like. That low flying over water, guys, is the most dangerous thing in our sport. Please keep in mind that the number one killer in paramotoring it's not hitting the ground, it's going into water, being tied up by your lines, and finding yourself in a position where you can't breathe. Uh, even if you don't think you're gonna fly over water, trust me, you're gonna want this even going into a small puddle. It's not worth the risk. Make sure you use your flotation. All right, next up. 
This one we obviously have here is the right side. This one's set. You can see it's going to deploy to the right. And I'm going to show you a different mounting system that some people prefer. This is not the one I prefer, uh, but they actually mount it right here to the cage. The reason I don't prefer this system, you can either mount it here or down here. Most pilots will do this simply because they don't like having it in the way on the harness. This one will not float you as high, right? This is gonna be floating you right there from your chest and you may end up on your face or you may end up on your belly or your back. Think about that. Think about where you're gonna float, how it's gonna look, how it's gonna feel. Making sure that there's plenty of room for that inflation device to go all the way out here on the standard units, you're looking at about 20 inches or so of flotation device. On the XL, it's even bigger. So make sure you have a plan in mind for everything you can do to keep yourself safe. A power float's a phenomenal tool. It's something that every pilot should have. They're affordable, it's great life insurance. And as you can see, it's a very simple thing to mount, very simple thing to maintain. Change out your sodium cartridge, that little salt tablet at the very bottom of this every single year, or more frequently if you're in a high humidity area. Hope this video has been good for you guys. If you've enjoyed it, please leave a comment down below with any other questions, tips, tricks, things you're looking for. We're always here to serve you guys here at Aviator. It's awesome to be able to share stuff like this that might just save your life, and we hope we get to fly with you soon. Have a good day.